over this next section to our table topics master. Raquel, if you'll please introduce your role and let us know what we can expect right now. I'd appreciate it. Raquel. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, Jeannie Scott. Um, as your table topic master, normally the table topic master would give you a series of questions or instruction of something for you to do doing table topics. I'm gonna to do something just a little bit different. Um, Mr. Timer, Muriel, how much time do we have in total for table topics? Uh, let's take a look at the schedule, Jeannie. Mm -hmm. You're okay. muted, Jeannie, you're muted. Jenny, you're muted. Okay, so we should have, basically it looks like 20 minutes, but we're gonna, let's go 15 minutes based on where we are. Okay, so I'll call on each of our members and our, our, um, our visitor as well, if you're willing, uh, Mandy, to step in and participate. And you'll have one to two minutes and what we're gonna do different, there's a series of events that are happening now in our world. I want you to take one or two minutes, pick a series of one of those events and just kind of rent. I want you to get out something that you've been holding in and use this one or two minutes as your therapy time to just kind of rant about something that you're feeling uncomfortable with that's happening in our world. You will not be judged. You have, this is an open free zone. You're able to speak on whatever you want to speak on. And my first person I'm going to call on is David. <laughs> wow. Put me on the spot, right, Cal? But uh, okay, so there is a word that I continue to hear, and it's disturbing. The word that I'm hearing is not the United States, the divided states. And every time I hear people use the word divided states, it cuts me to the core because we are living in a divided world a red, blue, left, right, conservative, liberal. And then when you break it all down, we all bleed the same blood. I know that's said over and over again, but come on, people, can't we just get along? I know that's been said too. But when you stop and think about all the tension, it's real. And what I'm learning is to just sit and listen. I don't need to be making any commentaries. I don't need to be making social media posts. I need to just be listening. There needs to be more listening and experiencing putting ourselves in the positions of the people that are hurting. Because we know that hurt people hurt people. And the more that I, speaking to myself, can take responsibility for the blind spots, the blinders I've had in my life, I challenge myself and anyone else who wants to follow on this challenge to be valiant in your efforts to listen more and speak less. Back to you, Madam Table Topics. Thank you, David. My next person I'm gonna call on is Lady Shabnock. Thank you, Raquel. You know, when you brought up that question for us what it made me think except for all the stuff that is going on right now is that on a Saturday I went to a funeral and this lady unfortunately got a heart attack and she died during surgery at the age of 71 what made this person stand out so much and I when I attend this funeral I've never seen 
everybody crying, young, old, woman, male, everybody was crying. And the reason everybody was so affected by her death, it was because she was a freedom fighter. She devoted her life from the beginning to fight for the rights of humans, rights for the, especially for women, to be able to voice themselves. And her whole life was all about bringing that type of unity, bringing that type of righteousness, the, the what is right and what is in the right of all human beings from birth to have. And what saddened me the most was that she spent all this time fighting for it and she never got to see it. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Lady Shabnoff. Mandy, are you willing to participate? You're, 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 you're muted. That was a tough one for me <laughs> right in the beginning. Um, I don't know. Um, my anger during this time. It's a hard one uh, to really... I mean, personally, my anger is that uh, my son graduated. He's a senior, 2020. He's my baby. And it was really hard that, you know, not only was he graduating, but there was a part of me that I was graduating as well, because you go through all this time and it's like an end of a chapter in our lives. Um, so not only did I miss out on that, I also missed out on during this uh, pandemic. My family lives in another country and we're not allowed to be together. We have such limited time living so far apart that you know, we look forward to these special times together and, uh, you know, to not have it, it's time passed. And especially with so much going on, you realize how special family and connection is. And so to miss out on a moment you can share together is, you know, it, it hurts, it's, it's upsetting. And um, it's something that you have to just really work through and accept but it also makes the moments that I have right now and all the times that I've had with my children very special. And so I have made the most of these down times to really spend a lot of time with them. And it's like a gift to me. So I've had a bit of both, the yin and the yang, because the positive was that I got to spend time with both my children that they would have, we all would have been busy with a life. And so we got these special memories and bonds together and created. So I created it here in the home. And I, we just have to um, accept that, you know, things happen and we have to be accepting of what we couldn't have. And that is all. Thank you, Toastmaster lady. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mandy, for participating. We appreciate you. The next person I'm going to call on is Jeannie Scott. Please. Thank you, Raquel. So I feel like I'm a pretty moderate person. You know, I don't always have a lot of opinions. I'm not very political or I don't think I am unless maybe there's something that kind of triggers my, my thoughts. Um, I know with um, all of the, the Floyd, you know, riots and everything, sometimes, you know, I'll overhear things that I'm, it kind of gets to me. I will say, I don't think I'm very political, but I do, I feel like I'm a human rights, like, I don't know, advocate, <laughs> maybe not an activist, but an advocate. And um, I heard a really cool um, podcast or, or I'm sorry, video that my daughter had sent to me. And it's some, it's a gentleman I'm not familiar with. He plays for Texas and it was, um, gosh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. The guy in the Dallas Fires Club, whatever his name is, I forgot. And they're interviewing and they're talking about like race, they're talking about difficult questions and things that, um, it kind of actually reminds me a little bit of what David's uh, talking about with his approach. It was a very valiant episode about discussing things that sometimes people don't feel comfortable discussing. Um, I will say I have a hard time when I hear people saying things like, you know, all, you know, not all lives matter, because to me it's all semantics. It's like, 
let's take the good points of what we have to learn. You know, there's always words and phrases and things that represent things, but it's, it's like people will get divided, as David mentioned, and kind of fixated on the, the verbiage or, you know, anything that, that, that takes things over one way or the other, and they're not really getting that they let it distract them from the message. And so if there's anything that, you know, I, I feel upset about, it would be that. It would be that people aren't looking at the big picture and what the message is behind it. And I think we have a lot to learn from each other. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you so much, Jeannie Scott. Our next speaker will be our Madam President, Adelina. Thank you so much, Raquel. So the question was to rant about something. Okay. Ranting, um, when it comes to ranting, I think I've learned that I, I learned from two people, Martin Luther, Luther King was one of them, Junior, and the other one was Mother Teresa. And I know Mother Teresa said she will never participate in a, in a rally anti-war, but if there is one for peace, she'll be there. And also Martin Luther King Jr. said that darkness cannot, cannot drive out darkness, only light can. And hate cannot drive out hate, only love can. So I feel very much inspired and moved whenever we go into a social dissension around things that require more learning and understanding and uh, dissolving this illusion of separation that a lot of us happen to just fall into by not being um, educated around the subject of inclusivity and human rights and how we're all one. And there truly is no difference between any one of us, right? So I find that rather than being against something and fighting against i was inspired i don't watch the news but i saw this one article that i literally cried when i saw it so i saw protesters and i saw the the police forces kneeling in front of them and i'm getting a goosebumps right now because that was what i feel like we should all be doing educating ourselves more on the our human condition and how we're all the same and invite more love in and understanding and be valiant in driving those values deep to our core. Back to you, Madam uh, Table. Thank you, uh, Madam President, Adelina, thank you so much. My next, I will call on Mr. Timer, Mariel. Do you need someone to time you, Mariel? Yes, Jeannie, could you please time me? I'll get it right this time, Moriel. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. These days, I don't rant that much. But I'll share a story when I did rant, and I actually took advantage of the rant. I just graduated high school, college, and I was, my life was boring as hell. <laughs> I had nothing going on. I had no skills with a college degree, my parents were nagging me to go get a job and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was frustrated with where my life was. I was frustrated that I, I didn't learn the skills that I needed to actually do something other than get a job, do something you know predictable. But what I learned to do is transfer and redirect that ranting into a positive outlet, which is through change and development. So these days what I do is whenever I, I do rant, right? But I don't say it out loud. What I do is I hear it in my head and I quickly, quickly change it to, okay, what can I do to change this? Or what can I do to uh, make this better? Ranting is important because ranting exposes the problem. And I think Part of the solution, you must learn the problem before the solution. So ranting exposes the problem. But what I've learned is that it's important to 
learn from that problem and learn from that rant and then come up with a solution. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Scott. Let's see. What am I bothered by? I, I think in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, I've seen the country kind of go away from science. The, the, the place that I remember it grew up with that you know put men on the moon and all kinds of amazing things. And now we've come to be where we have this weird thing where we, we think it's okay when someone says on the news something that we know is not true and they just keep repeating it like a marketing line over and over again. And people believe that, or we have a president who does the same, or other politicians who do the same on both sides, not just not just Democrats or Republicans. But things that were, when I was a kid, were so given that were the, that this was the way the things were. That now it's like, well, maybe you know, maybe four plus five isn't always nine, or two plus three isn't always five. It's like, no, that's always the way it is. If you measure something and it's this amount, then that hasn't changed. But for some reason, we have we've kind of stepped away from that. We've uh, we've gotten to this place where it is now okay to say, well, maybe it, you know, science is just kind of malleable. It doesn't it doesn't always work out, or may, and it, it you know vaccines maybe they don't work, and all kinds of things that just make me want to pull my if I had hair I'd pull it out, uh, <laughs> and so that's my rant. I. I I just, I can't believe we've gone so far away from that. And, and there's something that's happened in the last, I don't know, maybe I just sound like an old man that somehow people say, well, if you have, sci you have science and you have faith, then why can't you have both? Why, do the, why, why does one exclude the other? Why do people of faith dig in their heels of things that are, that are provably wrong? There is, you know, there are people running around saying the earth's 6,000 years old. It's like, really? Come on you know do you do you need that do you need to interpret a book literally to have it have value to you or whatever it is in your religion i mean isn't it enough that it's teaching you a way to live better uh, is that not enough for your faith and why did it why is it be that that we have to start dividing schools and dividing ways of belief and dividing who we can worship and who we can talk to and it feels like we've gone through this thing in the last 10 or 15 years where everything has gotten more divided than I ever remember it being. And I know that, you know, the country is not always, things have not always been good. Uh, and we have problems now where we have police departments that are out of control. And it's not, and, and the thing is there is like, I know lots of cops, most of them are great guys. There's a couple that are bad. There's a small percentage. It's more of a cultural problem that, when there's a problem with one cop, there's the, the, the response is to circle the wagons and kind of protect that one guy instead of saying, no, he's a bad cop. Get him out of there. And we're not doing that. We're not, we're just saying, well, it's kind of like a, a kid who was bad that you, you know, once upon a time back when I was a kid, kids were spanked. That doesn't happen anymore. I know, but, um, but it's like, well, if a little beating is good, let's, a lot of beating must be better. It's like, that doesn't work. And we're not realizing that. And I, I kind of feel like we've advanced so much in technology, but socially we're stagnated or maybe going backwards. So that's my rant. Thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate that. I believe every one of you and everything you just said this evening is valid. But what this has shown us this evening is that we can all rant in a loving social way and get our perspectives out to one another so that we can all listen and understand each other. And I love that each and every one of you participated in this. And it just shows me that there is, we can, we're gonna win this. We're gonna make it. So I thank you guys. And I hope everybody could just be like my, my Toastmasters group. I love you guys. Thank you. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. You, Raquel. Raquel, wow. Wow. I did not expect, I should have expected because you always wow, um, but that was a wonderful, very brave and very faithful table topic selection. I loved how you ventured out with that and I, I really like how that went. I mean, everyone, your opinions are incredible. 
Um, for so.